BC Outdoor Sport Fishing is brought to you by Pacific Toyota Dealers, Yamaha, BC Outdoors Magazine, Rapala, Duncan B. Lodge, Port Boathouse, Lowrance. Mayhem fly fishing. What's what matter going though, right? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. Like it just seems to be swimming straight up behind the boat. Like I don't know if it knows it's hooked or it could be like a rock fish too, or a link out of something. No, I don't think so. Did it take mine? I took mine at first though. Like what's going on here? Yeah, why is it being so popular? Get hooked on to something still? Hello, sir. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing there? Good. good. Welcome, welcome. Gonna... Well, that was a fun ride in. All of 20 minutes, maybe? I'd say from Cool Harbor. Yeah. Uh, with the 425. Yeah. Fast <laughs> engine. Yeah. It's good. So, uh, thanks for having us. This is oh, going to be awesome. Thanks for coming. Yeah. What a beautiful spot. So, let's talk about, first of all, let's figure out where we are. I know where we are, but let's let our viewers know where we are. And then after, we'll talk about what we're going to do. Well, we're in Quatsino Sound. Small mm -hmm. hamlet of Quatsino, I'd say four, four and a half hours north of Nanaimo. Okay. Um, come up on 19, hit Port Hardy, make a left, make your way to Cole Harbor, and then we pick you up from there. Yeah, it's awesome. Of course, we brought our, we brought the BCO boat up just to show it off a little bit and fish out of it. I think you're going to be in for a bit of a surprise. Saved us a step. Yes, it's beautiful too. Yeah. It's nice, lots of room to fish off of. So speaking of fishing, what's going on right now? What are, what are we going to chase? What are we going to do? Well, we've got some coho right in the sound, mm -hmm. basically right off the wharf. We can actually start trolling right here. That's and awesome. uh, we get offshore, we've got Chinook, we've got halibut. Um, weather's not looking that great, so we might be forced to fish uh, the Chinook for the most mm -hmm. part, but yeah. And I heard a rumor that one of your guides is a local prawn fisherman as well too, right? He is, yeah. So we might, yeah. we might soak some traps and get some local knowledge from him. That'd be fantastic, right? Yeah, I think we'll probably do that tomorrow. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Well, let's get the boat buttoned up and maybe we can hit an evening fish, get our bags in, and then head back down the dock and do an evening fish. Did we get a spring there? I don't know. That was a good hit. That was definitely a different hit. He sets those drags so softly that even a smaller fish looks like a monster. You want to slow the motor down just a touch? Oh, there's oh, one. Oh, double up, double, 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 double up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Formed it. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, did you man. see him come out of the water on his side? Incredible. How do, you, how do you stop that? There's nothing you can do with that. That was awesome. I was quick. Let's see if we can double up here. So, Tyler, what kind of fishery? Uh, what are we seeing around here right now, on the inside here? It'd be like Marble River Coho, likely. Okay. There's a few springs that show up around this time. Yeah. Um, but it's mostly the the coho that we're getting. Okay. What's retention on the coho right now in here? It's two. Two fish. Yeah, two fish. Clipped or not? Clipped or not? Okay. There's another one. Right there. Up. That's that's you then. That's you. You get a double? Oh, I think I might have lost this guy. Right, so this oh, one's still go. here. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> right at the boat. Oh, we got a double header to start. That's not a bad evening to start. 
Who's netting these? Well, Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> well, let's see which one's bigger. This one's a bit of a bleeder, so let's. Uh, why don't we put your rod holder down for a second, and okay. then I'll. I think he's okay for a bit, right? I think so. Okay. This guy's a bleeder, so I should probably. Bonk him. Oh, he's a little springer. Oh, we gotta get good. Oh, and he's only single hooked. Yeah. Okay. Can we like, release him? Yeah. Okay. Gaff. Yeah. Well, that took all of what five minutes. What do you got there? I would say. What do you got there? That's a pillow. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you want that one? Oh, wow, we can release it. I, okay. We don't yeah, they're just sing, they're single hooks, so. Yeah, for sure. We can release that one. So let's bring them in, and then I'll. Uh, this is a good thing with this one. If you want me to gaff it, I'll just pop it. I'll pop box up. Yeah, sounds good. He's well hooked. Yeah, he's got one only in him right now, right on the nose. I'm gonna touch him. If you settle down, you're gonna go. And gone. Down to the depths. Here we go. Beauty. Check your leaders. We'll be right back. See the highest detailed images of fish and structure with active imaging. Share sonar, waypoints, and routes wirelessly between Elite TI-2 displays. Elite TI-2, new from Lowrance. Closed captioning brought to you by the world famous Duncan B. Lodge, located in beautiful Rivers Inlet, BC. That was a good one. Beauty. Beauty. They're all, that's the thing about fishing, right? They're all good. Oh, aren't they? This guy is, he doesn't even know he's hooked yet. That's the best part. We got, finally got one on this side though. Yeah, no, no flash spoon. at all, right? No. Nope. Daisy chain, spoon, and procure. Procured. I'm just gonna totally overboard this. You're good for a bit? Yeah. You're yeah. not even close yet, is it? No problem. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Beauty fish. Maybe a little bigger. Beautiful. Not ready yet. That head's staying down, isn't it? Yeah. Learning with the Pros, brought to you by BC Outdoors Magazine. Hi, my name's Seth Fairman. I'm a commercial prawn fisherman and a guide at KO Lodge in Hecat Cove. Today we're going to teach you guys how to hopefully catch some prawns. Um, prawning is uh, very important to have fresh bait. And if you have some scent, you can add some scent to your bait. You're looking for 200 to 350 feet of water at the bottom of an edge or in front of a narrows or a river mouth. You've got your prawn trap. Attach your bait in the trap and the prawns will go in and hopefully stay in there until you pull it. You're going to want to leave a soak for at least two hours. Over a slack tide is best. It's okay to leave it longer. We've got <laughs> we'll be setting in 250 feet of water here, so we've got uh, about 200 feet of line that's floating, 
and about 150 feet of sinking line. It's really important to have sinking line because if you've got floating line, it'll just lay out on the surface and either you or someone else could run over it. Um, there we go. We're going to set these prawn traps about 60 feet apart. What we're looking for is this fast moving water that's coming out of the narrows here in Quatsino. We set our prawn traps right here. We've got these contours. We set the prawn traps right at the bottom, at the bottom of the steep edge. That's where all the food will pile up. Here we've got a jumbo, extra large, large, medium, and this is a small guy. These small guys are males that transition into female to protect our future. We should throw back the little guys and make sure that you don't keep the egg-bearing females. You can tell because they've got eggs in their bellies. Good luck. For more tips like this, tune in to next week's episode or check us out online. Man, you even kept oh. your hat on that time. No hat floss. <laughs> Only one opportunity, we got some, some good rollers coming in here. Okay, so I'll leave him in the water just for a sec, maybe. Absolutely. Let's get the boat pointed that way to take a bit of the brunt of everything. Do you want us to go downwind? It would probably well, be easier. You, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. This is this is great, because we got this on the on a blue fox spoon now. There we go. With no flasher. How was the fight? I'm a little bit jealous, I'm really? not gonna lie. Well, it's always a little better when you're not fighting that flasher, yeah, that's right. you know? Yeah. What do you think? So that's a decent fish. Beauty. I'm kind of jealous too because you got that one on the no flasher spoon we put down. No the green, fight. the green and uh, gold blue uh, blue fox matrix spoon with a little bit of pro cure. Pro cure. Pro cure. Pro cure. It. And it was right on the rocks too, which Fight's is so neat, special, right? Yeah. Yeah. Flasherless. I looked. Yeah. I missed it because I was up pointing the sounder trying to set the time and just check out the tides and stuff. And you got you're pretty quick. Bit of a technician. Yeah, you're pretty quick. You play hockey at all? Did you I ever? did play a little bit, yeah. yeah. You're pretty good in the corners, obviously. I didn't see you have any fear going in the corner there. I was a D-man, so you <laughs> kind of had to. You got to add it. Yeah. We got a big log here, too. It's great. <laughs> so anyway, we'll check this one on the license, throw it in the box, and get reset here, because we're in right them. Right and on. the best part is, is I don't think anybody else is getting fish around us. You know how I know that? Because the boats are following us. <laughs> It's a pro cure. It is. Pro cure. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. <laughs> Yamaha, the official power of BC Outdoors Sport Fishing TV. Yamaha. Conquer. Welcome back to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. We got a fish on. On cue. <laughs> right on the surface already. Beautiful. Look at this background. There we go. Does it get any more west coast than this? <laughs> That's awesome. What'd you say about this point here being fishy? Fishiest point <laughs> on the whole North Island, I think. <laughs> wow. Right on cue. Oh, awesome. He just got it. This guy got a little bit bigger here all of a sudden. That's great. You want me to clear that other line, Mike? You know what? I think we should. Okay. Because we don't know, oh, we don't know what's going on. Like, this guy is all over the place here. Definitely don't want to lose him to being lazy. That's awesome. 
every time we go by that point, you're going to say something stoic, <laughs> and we're going to get a fish, right? Is that, that's, that's the rule right. now? That's right. <laughs> this is just on one of those single barbless coyote spoons, too. So we got some anchovy paste on the back side of it. You know, just about the, I was going to pull this one up after I checked it for weeds, and I was going to put on bait. I think I didn't. This is awesome. Nice little Chinook, I think. The way it's doing its head shakes down. You can see the flasher just on the surface there, just doing its shakes. Tyler, what, when you, what's your season run now up here? Basically when do you guys when do you guys get going and how long do you guys go for? Beginning of June through the end of September. Oh, so you got a you got a pretty extended season. It really is. Yeah, yeah. that's lucky. Yeah, that's really good. And you guys, how many people can you accommodate at one at one trip? Roughly 16. Yeah. yeah. That keeps it that keeps it nice too, right? It does. Yeah, a little more manageable. And the facilities you guys have there is just that big lounge area. It's just I'm gonna might go lay on that bear rug later. That'd be all right with that. Or not. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah we're, we're really happy with Do it. Do some karaoke, maybe. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful. Well, we're gonna get this guy in the back of the water here. Quickly. Awesome fish. Awesome fish. Go back here to it. Oh, he's like almost ready. And now, here's a look at today's tackle and gear. Hello folks, we're going to talk about the gear that we've been using on today's episode. Well, we kind of uh, switched up a little bit in the afternoon so far, but really the, the highlight was this morning, getting some of those schnook in tight, running off of the downriggers and stuff. So uh, the rods are the classic moochers. These are 10 and a half foot classic moochers by Rapala, medium light, same rods I've been using for the last five, six years, and they're just Great bomb proof. Action. Yeah, we put a lot of stress on them in the riggers and no problem popping clips and and fighting fish on them. And the sensitivity is fantastic too. I don't know if you've noticed, but you can detect those little schnook bites really easy with these rods. So the reels are the brand new uh, Lure Jensen Legacy Series, uh, large arbor, great pickup. The UV handle, foam handle is really comfy, especially when a couple runs went and you get your hands dusted. You know, it's nice not having that plastic option. The foam is a little bit more forgiving for you, right? And uh, uh, the drag system on it, we had a couple screamers today. It was awesome listening to that drag, right? Beautiful. A uh, line is a 25 pound suffix. That's all I've used forever. And 25 pound, uh, the suffix line is just bomb proof. It's never had main line break on anything and it's got enough jam to, to do what we need, right? Nothing. I think we lost a few on the... And it was angler error. <laughs> we won't talk about knots. It was angler error, technically. All right, that's that was right. good. That's um, right. so, so obviously, when we come up to a new area to fish, we got to rely on local stuff too. And we have, you know, this is basically a floating tackle store at times. So there's lots of options. We've ran some bait, not as much success, but a couple spoons that really work today for us, right? And you picked them out of the box and you know what, let's try those, right? So let's, let's show the spoons for sure. Uh, you can show that one there. It's the Blue Fox Matrix, uh, green and gold, right? And uh, pretty good action on those things today. We had a couple good fish and we actually fished that one, I think, we did we so far we fished that one without a flasher on the one side we just ran right. it we ran it with just with a dummy flasher that's right. and that was neat getting that one fish on there so far right it sure was yeah, yeah. And especially with that setup with the rod and reel unbelievable yeah and then a quick standby you can see we can see the teeth marks on this thing and the damage <laughs> this was a brand new spoon <laughs> out of the package this morning when we started and we could see the teeth marks and we had several hits and of course a little something little secret i introduced you to is the procure magic right I'm I don't know. Are you, are you a believer? That's a even believer. better now. That's great. We, you know, I just like to put it down on everything, I, especially spoons and stuff. There's nothing like adding that extra little scent. And I've told you the Pizza Boy story, and I won't tell you any more about that because it's more of a bit of a secret story. But uh, I'm a firm believer in it, and it showed today, like how many fish stuck and held and bit on a spoon when a lot of guys were running bait around there, and we were using spoons. Uh, again, we can be a little bit lazier when we're running spoons. We're missing a tap. We're not having to check bait, right? I like it. I think the rod and, and gear are in the water more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more rod time, more water time means more fish. That's amazing. And we were actually ran this on the flasher combo too. So this was the combo we're using, and that's the white flasher with the with the UV tape. And that's 
something I go to everywhere I, I, I know that this flasher works, right? You're leaving that spoon, are you? No. Oh. Well, maybe I might leave one for you. It depends, right? Depends what just depends on what's dinner tonight. It's not the way it is. No, all right. Last night, I'll leave you a spoon. Of course, then the double black glow flasher, again, this is something that I've used uh, up and down the coast. And low light, bright light, doesn't matter conditions. I just find that this is confidence. When you've got confidence in something, it works, right? Super and, effective. And these are the two go-to that we've used on today's episode. And, of course, the North River, the first time being on the boat. It was. Lots of room. Lots of room, lots of fishable area, right? Well, the beauty of it is the deck space. Yeah. You know, like when you're trying to land the fish, you have so much room to have somebody back up into yeah. it and net the fish. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And of course, downriggers played a big role. Sounder was incredible too. And then of course, the brand new 425 to get you to and from. It's pretty impressive. Sounds pretty good, right? It was fast. <laughs> and gets going when you need to go. So it's been pretty good. Anyway, you know, I, I got to throw a little plug in because we did tow up here. So my the old Toyota Tundra, you haven't seen that truck, but I'll take you for a ride sometime. You might be impressed. You might actually buy one. And run it up here. It'd be kind of kind of nice, yeah. It'd be good. I'm in. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to follow up with a quick list, and then we'll see you out on the water. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back. Yeah. Just take a little bit of a left there because we don't want to go onto that reef yet. Do you want me to slow it down a bit? I'll just bring, I'll bring the throttle down off a bit here. Yeah, that sounds good. Should I clear this one? I think we should. Pretty good idea. He almost did the same thing as yours, Mike. Yeah, just did that kind of a run and then come back to the boat. <laughs> Swimming up beside us now. That's what you come for, right? Way above the weight class. Yeah, he's good. Right now, we'll let him go. Quick torpedo and gone. That's awesome. I used. I think he was just swimming with the boat, and now he's just decided to go. Am I under you? Okay. Let's hope he's not sealed again. There. No, there's a little bit of a pause there. Oh, God, no. Beautiful. Nice tr Tell free now. Trail yeah, there we go. I knew what I'm seeing, though. Unfortunately, we can't can't turn left. No. A little bit blood or what? Yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll get him in the net. We'll have a look here. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. That might just be the tail. Oh, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's all right. Nice job. Beautiful. That was a good, f oh, he got bigger too. Did he ever? <laughs> he's looking at, he's a football. I think he's, well, that was kind of fun. Sure was. I, like I said, I, I love fishing structure like this. To me, like if you're offshore and your waves walk, smashing around and stuff, I don't, that's not appealing. When you're fishing that up tight against the rocks, you're seeing bait and kelp everywhere and it's just that's fishing to me. That's the West Coast fishing, right? I love it. You know, like I was saying before, they just you never know where they're gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. They're up and down, they're doing all their thing. Well, I'm gonna shake your hand, so you're gonna have to hold that one down. Tyler, it's thanks. Be slimy. Yeah, oh, that's all right, that's okay. <laughs> thanks for having us. Hey, thanks for it's coming. It's been a fantastic, really uh, fantastic place here. Folks, thanks for joining us on BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. We look forward to having you join us on a future episode.